Hey, Jamie. Uh-oh, my table almost falleth over. <laughs> Hi, Pam. Happy Sunday. Hi, Angela. So I just want to be a full disclosure here. I may have to go unlock the door to uh, let someone back in because they went for a walk and didn't take their key. So if that happens, I'm going to tell you. And I can either um, hit, like, you guys can talk amongst yourselves and I'll unlock the door and come right back. <laughs> Or I can stop and start again. So I'll let you know before that happens. But I thought, I wanted to share this with you. I had this idea a while back. Um, this is the Wood Crate Framelit Sty. And this actually came out, I think it's been like two years ago by now. I, have this, I know this fits in here a certain way because I have it all very strategically placed. But of course now I can't figure out. There it is. So, um, this came out a while ago. I think this is now purchasable separately. You can't get it as a bundle any longer, but it is still purchasable. But the cool thing about this, so this is the crate. It makes a crate and then also has a stamp set. So you can stamp these images and you can use the, the heart to cut out the heart. It's got a lot of cool images because the heart and the star for like Valentine's, 4th of July or um, Memorial Day, something like that. And then we also have a moon and a rooster, which kind of coordinates pretty cutely with the home to roost rooster. But anyway, I thought this would be a cool idea if you were like in a hurry to maybe make like a little something or other to give to somebody. So I thought about it and I thought a way to make it easier is if you use designer series paper. So I went ahead and cut both of these out just to show you. Now, I guess you would have to be okay with the inside of it maybe being a different pattern. Or you could use plain paper if you wanted to and decorate it. You could stamp it with the flowers. You could use um, plain cardstock as well if you wanted it to be a little bit sturdier. But I also figured out a way that we could make a little bit of an insert for this. So I'll show you that. So basically, you do need two of these if you're going to make a box. So I used two pieces. But then I thought I could use these two pieces to decorate some cards. So we do have envelopes that are in the catalog. These are three by three whisper white envelopes. You obviously can't mail these, but they're great for like a little gift card or a note. If you have to put something in with a gift package, you get um, 40 envelopes for $9.50, which isn't bad. And these also do fit in the mini pizza boxes too, by the way. So if you wanted to like skip the crate, you could put them in the pizza box. But I cut card stock out of uh, whisper white. So this is Thick Whisper White. So I got one, two, three, four card bases. Nope, this is different. Hold on. Is that it? Yeah. I got three cards, and then I have kind of one card that's like a skinny card that really you could put in the same envelope. It would just be a little smaller. And then one that could be like a little bit bigger of a card. But this is using one full sheet of... Um, it's one full... Yeah, one full sheet of DSP, and then I cut down a piece to put, here it is, inside the box to make it sturdy. So what I thought is, I'm going to decorate these cards. So these are the thick cards. These are cards I got a while back. These actually came with envelopes a long, long time ago. So this is just a, a thinner card. This one is just regular Whisper White, but again, does measure the same. It's three by three. And then I also thought like if you, they just wanted like a card to throw into something, we also have um, the narrow envelopes. However, they do come with note cards. So you could put those in as well. If you wanted, they would just be taller. And you could put the envelopes in with them. So you could put maybe like a card and envelope. But I'm going to show you first how to put this together. And then I will go from there. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to use your die to cut out two boxes and then it's really simple. All you do is you fold along the score lines. And so it does come out flat. So you just fold these. And then you're going to lay them into each other. And what I did was I cut a little piece of Whisper White that I had left over from that full sheet. And this you could just lay it inside if you want it to be a little bit sturdier on the bottom. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, tear and tape for this because... I think it would probably be a smarter idea if it was a little sturdier. And you probably could also, if you wanted to, use uh, Tombow liquid glue. Because that will give you a little bit more maneuverability with lining up your pieces correctly. Because, and I'm going to put, I'm going to put this together before I actually put it together. So... 
sure I have this right. So we will have to put glue on the bottom, but basically this will go down like that. So this one's gonna hold that in place there. And this will hold that in place here. So I'm gonna make this the bottom. So I'm gonna just put a piece of this here just to hold it together. And I know this isn't tear and tape. My, I keep forgetting to bring my tear and tape over here and this is just the one that I have <laughs> more handy. And I'm gonna put, this is gonna be the inside. Is that right like that? Yeah, okay, that's it. I don't wanna put anything else because I'm gonna goof it up if I do. So I'm gonna just make sure these are nicely pressed. Now, if you are concerned with whether or not you're gonna be able to line these up, the other thing you could do as well, so you're gonna take your release paper off and I'm gonna take it off of all of them and then I'll show you what I was gonna say. Get this out of the way so I can see you. Hey, yeah, you caught me, huh? I know, I've been extra. I've been what the kids call extra this week, extra live. <laughs> so if you take a little bit of your Tombow and you put it on top of your whatever you're using, so either your um, tear and tape, your snail, your dimensionals, what it does is it is going to be still sticky, but it kind of gives you a second to be able to like maneuver them better, if that makes sense. So you kind of, it doesn't really like stick stick until you need it to. So I'm not gonna press super hard because I wanna make sure this is right. And I'm gonna line that up there like that. Again, I'm not really pressing super hard yet because I just wanna make sure that it's square. Let's see, that looks pretty good. I did not do the bone folder on this because it's DSP. So it's a little bit more prone to tear with the bone folder, but now that I have it in place, I'm gonna just press if you have, if you are doing this with a uh, card stock, I would definitely use the bone folder. Just that way you get a nice firm hold. And then, so I cut this little extra piece so you could put this on the inside. So if you wanted to make your box a little, give it a little bit more sturdiness. This measures, it's like three and three and a, three and a quarter by one and uh, like five eighths. So I just cut it down about an eighth of an inch each way. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put a little bit of glue onto this and I'm gonna stick this on the bottom. So again, you don't have to do this. It just kind of will reinforce the, the bearings of the box a little bit more if that makes sense. Okay, so just like that as is, you can fit these are, so this is the envelope that matches the three by three cards. So you can fit them in there nicely. Um, this one was a piece that was left over. So this would fit in. It was like, it would be like a, a mini, mini card. And then if you wanted to make tall cards, you would just stick them in this way. So either way would work perfectly fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these out. And then we're just going to like dress these up a little bit with the paper we have left. So these all measure three inches by three inches. So anything that you want to be exactly lined up, you're just going to cut it three inches. So I'm going to just trim a couple of these pieces off since I have them. So let's see. So we'll go three inches by, I'll do a half an inch. Do one at three quarters. Let's see, this kind of really doesn't go with it, but you could use any other paper. Also, the cool part about, the reason I got this garage paper out is it's got a lot of gray, gray paper and black paper. So this would always look, also look really nice with the, uh, like kind of that, I don't want to say dirty, but like a dirty farm-ish look, like that dark look of a farm. If that makes sense. I'm going to do this one again at a half an inch. What else did we have? This one was, let's see what this measures. This is three inches as well. So I'll do that across again as a half an inch piece. So I have one, two. This one I did at three quarters. We'll see, what's this one measure? This is four inches. So this one was like four by two and a half. So let's see. I'm gonna do just to, cause I'll do one with the frog on it just for the heck of it. See if we have something that's like slightly green. This one, even though it's got engines on it, when it's gonna be a slim piece in the background, you might not notice it as much. So I'm gonna cut this one at a half inch and then just trim it down to four 
And because there's like so little of it, you probably really won't notice it as much. So we'll do something with this with the frog. And again, since you have these little strips of paper, you could do them for the outside or for the inside. Either way would work perfectly fine. All right, so I have my, I'm gonna just bone fold these real quick. Have this. So again, this was one full sheet of paper I cut and I kind of went with it. So there's, this one is four by, four by two and a half. This is three by three. This one is three by three. The other one I have was just an extra piece that I had laying around of um, not as thick whisper white. It's just regular whisper white. So I just kind of threw that extra one in there. We have this one. And this one. I think I am missing one. Yeah, this is a little, little wide for that. Could be like, this could be a super super simple card with just like a sentiment sentiment across it and something on the bottom or we could even put like a stripe and just put a little sentiment there so we'll see i'm gonna leave this one as is for now so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do these just as like a little quick card so we will do one with the rooster and we'll do thank thanks for your friendship i'm gonna do one with the reeds and then we also had the frog so i thought these were cute so we'll do something with the frog I'll do this one here. Him on the tall card. This guy over here. And then I'm going to just do one of these on the uh, this little card. We'll just say a note for you. And then we'll just put... I'll put this in the background before I put that thing on. Just to kind of keep it simple. So we'll make these all really simple cards. Okay. So I forgot to fold this one. And... What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this one first. I'm going to stamp this on the background. We'll put this on top and then I'll just put a note for you. So I'm going to keep this with the gray theme. Um, again, this is one of the uh, older cling, not cling, clear mount stamps. So I don't have the sticker on the back. So I'm sorry ahead of time. I'm just giving this a super, super duper press. Thank you guys for all the shares. I appreciate it. I'm going to do this in gray granite. So it'll be pretty light. Kind of not to take over the rest of the card for this first one. So let me scoot these up a little bit so you guys can see what's going on. So I'm just going to kind of stamp this across. And this is funny because this is one of those stamp sets I got early on and I was like, oh, I can't wait to use it. And then I got distracted by other things. <laughs> and then I didn't use it very much at all. The stamp set and the uh, the die, I should say, both of them. All right, I'm going to attempt to put this a note for you on the bottom. This is in Memento. Okay, so I'm going to put this down here. I'll just put it to the side a little bit. Ooh, that worked out well. And then I'm going to hopefully, that actually looks cute like it is. It doesn't even need this piece. As a matter of fact, I might swap this to a teenier piece. That way it's not kind of overpowering it. And I'm going to hook that one like that. So there's that one. And then let me set, I'm trying to set these on the side so I don't clean them while we're stamping. That way we can spend more time stamping. So then with the little um, wheat, I'm going to do the same thing. Except this one, I'm going to do these a little bit darker. So I'm going to go with basic gray. And I'm going to stamp multiple times before I... I'm done. So I'll stamp. So basically first generation will be first inking and then I'm just going to keep going until it runs out. Okay. So let's see. Let's see. I'm going to bring in one more, just a dark one over here, just to kind of even it out. There we go. So there is that. So that's just, we'll leave that as is. So that's with the wheat. And I wonder if this is going to be too big to fit across because that would be really cute. Enjoy the simple moments. But I think it might be. Actually, that will work out just perfectly. Now, if you wanted to get super fancy, what we could do, but again, I'm trying to make this a quickie, is you could heat emboss this in white. So just a little takeaway idea in white on top of this DSP. Um, I'm going to just stamp it in black and hopefully I will line it up since these are the, the uh, cling mount stamps. They actually line up much better. They do stay on usually when you actually put them on, which is great. 
And both of these are celebration items. So the Home to Roost stamp set, which I really, really love. Okay, I have to go really quick to unlock the door. I will be back in like one second. Hang in there. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna have this enjoy the simple moments. I'm gonna see if I can line this up. Try not to be out of breath since I just took those steps so fast. <laughs> okay, so if you wanted to, this could be a little bit darker, but I'm gonna leave it like that. I think it's cute. So let me close this up. Ooh. Should have done a shot of my inhaler before I ran up and down the steps like that. Hello from Zilla, Washington. Thank you for joining. Okay. So I'm going to put this down here at the bottom. This isn't 100% dry yet, so. So easy. Another easy card. Go ahead and put this one down while I'm at it. Oops. Put this one straight across. Oh my gosh, she is a character today, I tell you. Hmm. It's a little crooked. If you guys could hear him squawking. It's hilarious, but also at the same time, like, where does he get this stuff from? Okay, so there will be that one. So we have two. So this one will go in an envelope. Just set that in there. This one, you could put in a little envelope. It's just going to be really tiny. So we'll set that one in there as well. Okay, and let's see, now we have the chicken, or the rooster, I should say. Now, what I'm going to do with this one is, I'm going to put a little bit more effort into this one. This one I'm actually going to color in. So I'm going to stamp this and put this on the side to dry a little bit. So I'm stamping this in memento because I think I'm going to use the blends and the watercolor pencils with this. Okay, so I'm going to let him set to dry. Another cool thing you could do is you could stamp a second rooster and just cut it out with post-it um, post paper, stick it paper, or some sort of a cling paper. You could mask him off and then stamp these in the back. But since this is pretty light, just going to add this in the background just for the heck of it. And then we should hopefully be able to cover that up. I have to trim this just a little bit, but we're going to put this on the side to dry. All right, so then we also have this dude here, which I think I forgot to take into account, and another one. So let's see. This one is one I was going to do something with this. So since we have this kind of uh, beat-up-looking red, here's what I'm going to do for this one. I'm going to do the rooster and the star because that those are both kind of like far, farmy like things and I'm going to do real red but I'm also going to grab my gray basic gray marker you could do this with black as well but I'm going to do this with this just to see what it looks like so kind of give myself a little area to eyeball where I'm going to put those so where's my pencil so I'm going to just draw a line kind of where that should go so I know where to stamp and then we're also going to put something up here at the top. And I think I'm going to do the greeting first. So I'm going to do this in black. So same thing again. I'm just going to stick with Memento since I have it out. I set this on the side for a second. Pop this up here. Uh, got a little smudgy there, but that's okay. All right, now I'm going to grab these two. And this one I put the sticker on, so I'm going to have to really push to make sure this one gets where I want it to be. <laughs> well, hi, Chris from Australia. Oh, my goodness. Thanks for joining. Okay, so I have my rooster. And these do have lines in it. So if you see the way this stamp set looks, it has lines through it. That is the way it's supposed to look. It's not supposed to look perfect. And then what I'm going to do is I have my basic gray marker. And just again, like I said, I kind of wanted to have like that 
dirty feel to it. I just kind of tapped my marker on there. Oh, he actually looks like a speckled hen. Isn't that interesting? I did not do that on purpose, that's for sure. <laughs> and I'm going to clean him off. Of course, he came unlodged. That's the great part about those new cling mount stamps. You don't have to worry about them falling off when you clean them like these old style do. I'm going to do him one more time. Okay, and then I'm going to do this one. Instead, I'm going to kind of add... Just a little bit to like the edge of the feathering where that would be. Okay, so just like that. All right, so I have two roosters, slightly similar. I wouldn't say they're exact by any measure. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stamp my star. Oh good, this one I didn't put it on. So I'm gonna stamp my star, but I'm gonna stamp him off before I stamp it so it's kind of faded looking and this is pretty inky so I'm going to go with the second I'm going to stamp it twice before I stamp on there okay so just like that this one I pressed too hard I had my little ink ring there so note to self don't press hard like I did I got a little excited Okay, another thing you could do if you have a little whoopsie like that is you could always add a little creative uh, cover-up, shall we say, okay? So what I'm going to do is you want to do this with something behind you. This mat that I have is very easy to clean off, so that's why I'm doing it straight like this. But I'm going to take the brush tip of my marker, make sure all the rest of these are out of the way, and I'm going to flick so I get some splatter. I'm kind of trying to concentrate it onto this little line here, which of course it didn't cover up at all. But that way, a little too splattery there at the top. It kind of covers it up. Maybe you don't see it quite as much. And then I'm going to glue this down. You do want to be careful because this is still going to be wet. So I'm going to tape this down. Very carefully. So I don't... And hopefully I drew my line low enough that you won't see it once I add my paper. Okay. So there, we have kind of plaid chickens with a little splatter. So that'll be our other card. So there's another one there. So since we've done a lot of like red with this, since these two are frogs, I'm going to do these in green. So this one, I may do him in black as well and color him in. I'm not 100% sure yet, but this one we're definitely going to do in something more greenish. So let's see what cool sentiments do we have. We could do, we'll do, you can do anything for this one. And for this one here, we'll do hoppy for you. And while I'm at it, just because we have this other stuff, by the way, if you guys never, um, noticed if you haven't seen this this stamp set will be the today is the last day you can earn this for free but you can make the frog prints so for you tiana fans out there or um oh gosh what is it the princess and the frog which is one of my niece's favorite movies i love that movie so you can make the frog prints so i'm gonna add the little firefly and the frog and we'll do the hoppy for you let's see small one here all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stamp the frog first and I'm gonna stamp him in old olive <laughs> you're coming over to, hey I'll teach you how to flick any day Gail and you can teach me how to do all those incredible cards you do <laughs> all right so I'm gonna put him here all right so you can see he's pretty subtle in the green so that was in old olive and then I'm going to do my dragonfly or fly or whatever. He might be like more of like a mosquito-y something or other. I'm going to do him in Tranquil Tide. Because this is going to be one of those uh, colors that will be retiring soon. Cute. I know. Celebration is over tomorrow. Or I should say today. This is the last day. So I have him here. Let me move these out of the way so I don't goof this up. 
And then where did I have? I had my little sentiment. Here it is. I'm going to do this again in Memento. Okay. I'll put him over here. Oh, smudge that one a little bit, but that's okay. Y'all know how to flick and cover it up now. So I'm going to bring these two are going to be the two that are going to dry. So I'm going to do him also while I'm at it in Memento, just in case, because I think for some reason I might color this one in too. And then we will finish up these cards. But these are simple. I mean, you know, you have your little box. If you do the box with the DSP, it makes it way faster to figure out what your color scheme is going to be. And if not, you could kind of jazz up your card stock by stamping it with something in the background to like make your own DSP, which we do a lot. Put this on the side as well. Let me grab this one. You can do anything. I love this. This is what we should think is stampers. You can do anything because you know why? We can fix anything. Look, we can fix virtually any mess. And I want to put this little cockeyed and I pressed it too hard. But that's okay. I must have hard, hard pressing today. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let me scooch all these out of the way. I'm going to keep this down. And I'm going to keep the granny apple green. And so we did that one, Tranquil Tide. Just trying to think. I'm going to do some blends for some of these. Maybe a little bit of powder pink marker on that. I'll have to be super careful. And I'm going to do powder pink and pool party for this whatever he is. I don't know if he's a dragonfly or if you guys have seen the B movie, if anybody's seen that, I really, really love that movie. It's so cute. But always, uh, whenever I think of flies or mosquitoes now, I should say, it makes me think of uh, Chris Rock riding on the Bloodmobile, which was hilarious. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen that movie, you should watch it. It really is funny. Okay, so I have, let's see, my Stampin' Blends. I'm gonna go with Poppy Parade, light and dark. This is going to be one of those crazy colored roosters, I think. I have Old Olive, light and dark. How about a little bit of a crazy, what is this, pool party, I think? Dark. Nope, that's dark pool party. Let me if I can find a light one. And light pool party. And, of course, we do need a little bit of yellow of some sort. So I think this is Daffodil Delight. Yes. All right. So I have those. So that'll be for the rooster. And I'm going to do a little bit of crumb cake for the dirt to fill in. Okay, so I'm going to do this one first because he is the driest. Put these on the side. So what I generally tend to do when I have my stamp and blend, you do want to make sure no matter how you store these that you store them flat like this because if you store them one way or the other, I think the ink goes to one side and you, you can't refill them so you probably can't get it to go back. But I usually start with light and then add dark. That's just me. You might be able to do it a different way. Uh, some people only buy one marker and then they will take the uh, color lifter which is this white one. It's a, it's a colorless lifter. So it's kind of like an eraser, but it's not like a, a miracle worker fixer. So don't think of it that way, but some people will buy dark and just blend out the light. I very rarely use the color lifter. If I'm being honest with you, I use the, the colors most, but again, I do start with the light. So we'll just do a little bit of light up here. Just do a little bit on the chest. And a little bit of feathers and I'm gonna I don't really fully cap them either just as you've noticed that I kind of keep the lids just kind of slightly on there and then I go back again with the light and blend the dark out if that makes sense it makes a lot of sense in my head so then I'm going to add in the majority of him. I'm going to do green. So I'm going to just do a little bit of pool party. So again, pool party isn't terrifically dark though. So I'm going to start with the dark for this one. And somebody's on vacation. Who is lucky enough to be on vacation right now? Just add a little bit through the tail feathers. Again, this is my imaginary rooster. Kind of probably a little bit more like Hey Hey. I'm going to add just a little bit of light pool party throughout. And then I'm going to go back in. And I'm going to start with my light old olive. So I'm going to kind of just fill the rest of this in with the light old olive. And same thing through the tail feathers, just kind of following the feathers. 
or I don't know why I made his head green, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. Maybe this will be one of those first times when I use the color lifter. There's a first time for everything, right? Isn't that what they say? So I'm going to just add some dark. And then I'm going to go back in minus the head. And I'm going to go back in again with the light and just kind of blend over and make sure there's no white spots. This is an extremely colorful rooster. He's probably been on vacation somewhere awesomely fun. Okay, so just for the heck of it, I'm going to get out the color lifter. And I'm going to go right around his head just a little bit. You do want to be careful, though, because the more you use the color lifter, and it does kind of lighten it up. It's definitely lighter than it was. It can make your paper a little bit bally. So, you know, if you overwork it, it makes it a little weird. So just be wary of that. So I'm going to add in a little of the light Daffodil Delight. Just kind of here, there, kind of down by his feet. Go over that poppy parade a little bit and I'm going to add a little bit of dark I'm trying to make his face a little more yellow he kind of looks like he's been on a really bad flight and things are going south okay so there's that so then I'm going to add just the light stampin blend of the crumb cake for the dirt because this really won't show too much because of our uh piece of DSP we have at the bottom. Now one thing to note for those of you who are really anal about this, it's going to go through a little bit because the blends do go through. This is on Thick Whisper White, but just so be aware. If you, if you don't like this, you could always use the regular um, Stampin' Write markers. So you could use these instead with a blender pen. You could use your ink pad with a blender pen. Or you could use watercolor pencils, but just be aware it does go through a little bit. But I think it looks pretty neat, so... <laughs> A green rooster. Yeah, I don't really, I probably should know what color roosters are, but in my world, as Alice in Wonderland says, everything is nonsense. Nothing what is, is what it is. Everything is what it isn't. And contrary-wise, I'll stop there. Okay, so there's that. And of course, I didn't line this up exactly perfectly. So what I'm going to do is take my little snips here and just trim this off. Nobody will know but you and I what I did because you know I'm not great at giving things out so no one probably will ever actually see this card in real life so so there's that one so I'm going to add him in I didn't put a sentiment on here so you could if you wanted you could always put like a little something here at the bottom you know what with the we'll go with the rooster theme since he's a crazy colored rooster and I'll just stamp you can do anything down here on the bottom just to kind of finish it up there you go so we have that. I really like this and I agree with you with the celebration ending. I really will miss this rooster. I think is one that I will not ever get rid of because I really do like him. So let me move these off to the side. Okay. So now we have our frog. So I'm going to go ahead and color this guy in. I'm just going to do the inside of his wings. And again, because I am using a lighter marker on a darker color, even though it is dried, I just am being gentle. So I did uh, powder pink and then pool party. Just make this guy a little crazy colorful. He is outlined in a uh, tranquil tide. Keep his eyes kind of white bugging out, which are kind of cute. Just put just the teeniest bit. This is gray granite. I'm just going to put just a little color on the underneath of his eyes in here, which is the uh, pen tip part of this. So it just gives a little depth. So there he is up close. Other thing we can always add because if you're flying, you definitely need some Wink of Stella. Just put this here and just be mindful. Wink of Stella does make colors bleed together a little bit. So a little bit of a uh, Wink of Stella on top of him. And then we will finish with the frog. So let's see, I do have Granny Apple Green and Old Olive, which I stamped him in Old Olive, so maybe I need to go with it a little different color. I'll do Garden Green. So what I'm gonna do with this, and this is just a way to show you, there's so many different things you can use. You could just take your blender pen, and we'll just pick a little bit of this up. Go with the darker first, so I'll just kind of fill in his colors, make sure I'm still on the screen there. And as you use your marker 
or your uh, blender pen, I should say, it will lighten up. So kind of start wherever you think the darkest part would be of the frog. There you go. I'm going to put just a teeny bit on the bottom of his belly because I'm going to fill the belly in with a lighter color. But since my color is starting to fade out on my blender pen, I'm going to go up again with the rest of him. So I'm going to go up and do his face. And the blender pen will bleed the edges of your color since this was just stamped with a regular ink color a little bit. So that's why I kind of tried to choose colors that were um, similar-ish. And then you could also go ahead, if you wanted to, you could even fill his mouth in with a little bit of pink there. So that was Garden Green. And then when you were using your blender pen, so don't mind my notes written all over this. All you're going to do is you're going to keep rubbing on a piece of paper until it comes clear, and then you could use it again. So you are not one-time use. You can use them over and over. And then this is the lighter. This was the Granny Apple Green. I'll fill in the rest of him. I'm going to fill in the spots a little bit on the under of his eyes. And I'm just going to go ahead and just to give this a little bit of different tone variance, I'm just going to fill in kind of go over what I already filled in to make sure there's no white spots and it will kind of give him some depth just to have the different colors in there so there's that looking very froggy and let's see what else I am going to take while I'm at it I'm going to do just a little bit on the inside of his mouth here just like that so there's that. And I did smudge my hoppy for you, but that's okay. Other thing that's in this, which is really cute, that you could always add to it as well, are these little flies, which are just hilarious. But anyway, so we have that. And where is my piece of paper that I had for that? It's got to be here somewhere. Hold on one sec. Let me put a couple of these things away because I still have this dude to do. This one was for the long piece. Did I forget one for that? Nope, here it is. So we'll just put this on the bottom. And the other thing you could do too, if you wanted to, is you could take a pen. You could do this. I'm going to do this one since it's lighter. And you could kind of give him like those little, nope, that's a little bit, just a teeny bit too light. What did I do with my smoky slate marker? Lost it. All right, I'm going to go with basic black. Hopefully I don't mess this up. I'm just going to give him like that little flying trail. So it looks like he's been flying in crazy circles. Just like that. So there's another one. Really simple. All right. So the last one, I don't know if you guys remember this. I'm sure there are some people that have to be some people aside from me that remember this. But um, I'm going to do him with a little bit of a combination of the watercolor pencils and the Stampin' Blends. So if anyone aside from me remember, googly eyes, you're right, uh, Michigan J. Frog. Somebody else on here has to remember Michigan J Frog. He was on Bugs Bunny. He was the the frog that that poor man found in the box that was always singing when no one was around. <laughs> so I have these four watercolor pencils. These are a combination of the current ones we can buy, and then they offered a set uh, not so long ago. So Old Olive and Daffodil Delight are in the still current one. But in case you manage to get your hands on these. I am also pulling out Garden Green and Granny Apple Green. But, and then the other thing I'm going to do too is, let's see. Might do this with, I'm going to do this with my gray granite pad and I'll show you. I'm going to give him a little shadowing. And actually, you could even add a little shadowing under him. So I'll do that to him as well when we're done. But he was always... They're a little bit blurry. I'm sorry. Sometimes Facebook is goofy like that when you go back from a closer image to not. So I will show you at the end. I will lay all of them out. I promise. I usually do that at the end. But I was just actually showed my son the Michigan J Frog one the other day. I'll just give him a couple little spots that we can kind of blend these together with. So if you've never used the watercolor pencils before. You can do these multiple ways. You can kind of, you can just color with them if you'd like and kind of blend your colors out. 
You can wet them ahead of time and color with them. You can wet them after the fact and color with them with either water or with a blender pen. Both of them work pretty cool, but they both give kind of like a different picture. And let's see, I'm gonna add a little dark to him. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. You can also color over these a little bit with the um, Stampin' Blends. So that kind of gives a pretty neat effect as well. So it just depends on really what you wanna do with it. I'm gonna outline his mouth a little bit but lots of possibilities, especially for frogs that are standing up. All right, and last but not least, I believe this is Old Olive, yes. Just add a little darker tones to him. So since behind him here are his glasses, I am gonna go ahead to, I think we have, gotta be a light one. I'm gonna use balmy blue is probably the lightest. I'm gonna just fill the glass part of his glasses in. Just a teeny bit. So he has his glasses there. There you go. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you just a couple other things you can do. And so you could, if you wanted to, you could take, I would recommend going with a lighter one. So since this is, that's dark granny apple green, that's not a good example. You could use light granny apple green. I would use the smaller tip if you wanted to. And just kind of, you can like add some lines of detail to it if you want. Kind of blends the colors a little bit. So you can also mix the Stampin' Blends. As you can see, there's lines here kind of around the edge. You can take, and I want to make sure that I clean this off. You can take your blender pen now. And I'm going to bring this up. Let me see if I can bring this up so you guys can at least see this when it's in action. Make sure it's nice and clear. So when you blend this with your blender pen, it's going to kind of mix the colors together from the glycerin. And it just gives them a softer edge and it kind of makes them lose the pencil lines, if that makes sense. So you can use this with watercolor or with the aqua painter, I should say. But if you do, you definitely want to use watercolor paper because it will beat up your... So it kind of makes it a little bit softer. And I want to just do that over here with the glasses portion. So there you can see, it, it makes everything much softer. It gives it a very soft look. So that's another really neat one. So one other thing I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna use again the, uh, the blender pen for this. If you don't have a puddle of ink in this, in this uh, ink pad, the old style pads you just had to squeeze. For these, what you do is you press from the bottom and it'll give you a pull in the center as you can see that's where it touched right there you can kind of see that round mark so it fills the center in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my blender pen and I'm going to get a little bit of the color I don't want too much because I don't want it to be too dark and I'm going to just put a little bit of shadow under his foot so he doesn't look like he's just floating in air doesn't have to be too much and I'm going to do the same thing for this frog here You could do it with the rooster, but since the rooster had dirt under him, we don't really have to. Doesn't have to be exact. Just kind of something so it makes it just look a little more realistic. There we go. Okay, so all I have to do is add this other little strip. Put this over here. Again, I know this was paper that's got mechanical stuff on it, but frogs can be mechanical. I'm sure they can in some world. And this one, of course, I didn't put that paper over quite far enough, so there is a teeny little white ledge, but we'll just pretend like that's not there. Also, I smudged the back of it pretty good. There we go. Okay, so let me just show you guys these cards. 
And that is going to be it for today. If you guys have any questions, you can feel free to send me an email at reachthestamper@gmail.com. Remember, celebration does end today. This is the last day, March 31st. So some of these things, if you're watching this after the fact, are no longer going to be available. But if you order today, you can still earn one of these stamp sets for free with a $50 purchase. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday or end of your Sunday, depending where you are in the world watching. Thanks for joining. Have a great day.